Hello, uh, this is a quick review of loop shaping. Uh, this is for my students in uh, EEC 640 class at Cleveland State University, Engineering and Cybernetics. Uh, <clears throat> to uh, start our uh, introduction, uh, we have to go back to 1927 when Harold Black invented negative feedback amplifier. And this is just a, a rough diagram. And this uh, amplifier has uh, high gain but nonlinearities. And uh, he introduces uh, a negative feedback, a, a passive uh, uh, network of uh, resistor inductor uh, capacitors. And, <clears throat> and uh, uh, the feedback is very small uh, compared to mu. But the product of mu and beta is still very large. And with this assumption, the, um, the gain uh, changes from a mu in open loop to one over beta in closed loop. And Black didn't have a, a much uh, a concept of a dynamic system. Uh, so his uh, division are, are all in static terms. Uh, he couldn't explain uh, why the circuit will uh, burst into a singing or oscillation or how to prevent, prevent it from happening. Nyquist, five years later in 1932, uh, <clears throat> found out the condition under which the circuit will be uh, stable, will be uh, free from singing. And his uh, paper, very famous paper, demonstrated the Nyquist stability criterion as we call it today. And if you treat mu and beta as a function of a j omega, which they are, the, um, uh, the gain uh, at low frequency is very high. But at high frequency, when uh, frequency goes to infinity, the gain will always drop to zero. And Nyquist's paper proved uh, it's uh, the manner in which the uh, <clears throat> mu and beta, what they call loop gain channel function, comes back to, uh, to origin that will determine the loop stability, the closed loop stability. For example, if you go into the origin this way, it's unstable. You go, go into the origin this way, it's stable. <clears throat> For details, you can uh, read the, the paper or pick any modern control or classical control textbook and um, it's in there. Uh, what the uh, Nyquist uh, didn't or didn't bother to explain is, why don't we uh, bother to come to uh, to, to a third quadrant or a second quadrant in the first place? Why don't we just go to the origin from here or from here directly? Because uh, at low frequency, the gain is very, very high, uh, almost zero uh, degree phase margin, a uh, phase, uh, phase shift. <clears throat> so this question um, has to, uh, uh, to wait until, until Bodhi in 1940s <clears throat> found out there's actually law of physics that governs how you can come back to the origin. Bodhi, in his famous Bodhi plot, he, plot, he plots the uh, uh, loop gain channel function in terms of magnitude uh, <clears throat> versus the frequency. And uh, he discovered at the law of physics, uh, the, the relationship between the, uh, the changes in the magnitude and phase angle. So in order for us to meet the Nyquist stability condition, uh, he demonstrates that the, uh, the, when the amplifier, the gain of amplifier drops at a higher frequency at the edge of the bandwidth, it has to drop very smoothly uh, in the neighborhood of uh, zero dB crossing. So you can drop very fast here, you can drop very fast here, but you cannot drop very fast when you cross over zero dB. Okay. And in his paper, he uses uh, octaves, six dB per octave with the extra octave at the end. But in our design, in uh, uh, classical control theory, we uh, call it one pole law of uh, roughly 20 dB per decade. And this allow uh, the system behavior around this frequency close to uh, uh, a, a single pole system, one pole row off. A single pole system give you ma maximum minus 90 degree, which is this line. Yeah. So Bode established for the amplifier to be stable. This is the uh, loop gain uh, magnitude plot. This is the shape it must retain. Yeah. And that's the law of physics that you have to follow.
the discovery of black necklace and body belong to communication engineering. It was not until Second World War when communication engineers from Bell Labs and uh, servo engineers from MIT and other places worked together on the aircraft anti-aircraft anti uh, fire, fire control problem. And they discovered the NACO stability uh, criteria and the body loop shaping play a big part in how do we um, uh, stabilize a servo mechanism and push it to be very fast at the same time stable. And after war, it was written into a classical control theory. So this is a closed loop kernel function. And this is a reference, this is the output. The uh, problem of control is described as design controller so that the output follow the reference. Yeah. Uh, but it's not that simple. Yeah. If, you, if you look at the, uh, the real control problem, it's, uh, it has many, many aspects to it. Yeah. You have uh, uh, not only uh, R to Y relationship you want to uh, maintain, you also have to reject disturbance, deal with noises, uncertainty in the, in the plant. You have to design a reasonably uh, 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 given um, uh, profile for, for the output to follow. You have to digitize your uh, uh, kind of function so that you can implement it in the digital um, uh, control form. Okay. So all of these, has to be expressed in terms of either design specifications or design constraints. And that makes design uh, challenging. Now, how do you design controller to meet all of these constraints at the same time? The previous method of TID of loop shaping of, of rule locus and so on only address one part of the uh, problem. For example, the uh, rule locus of design only addressed how do you determine the gain of controller so that R and Y has a, a nice relationship. It doesn't deal with the uh, disturbance or noise. Okay. So loop shaping method, it's more of a way of thinking to put all these uh, con conditions, constraints, specifications together yeah, and the uh, design controller to meet all of them at once, at least achieve a, a, a certain co compromise among the uh, different competing uh, requirements. So the first uh, step in loop shaping is to, uh, to put all of the uh, uh, using bodies method, uh, put all the design considerations on the, uh, as a constraint of uh, a magnitude uh, plot of the loop gain, GCGP. Uh, at low frequency, this is what uh, normally happens. At low frequency, to have a good command following and disturbance rejection, you want high gain. At high frequency, to have a, a, a small sensor noise and uh, um, insensitive to model dynamics, you want low gain. And in the middle is what the, the body integral comes in. And you cross zero, zero, order, uh, zero dB uh, with one pole roll off. And that, that's roughly the design principle of, uh, of uh, uh, loop shaping. Okay? And the design method, like I mentioned before, you have many different methods. The loop shaping method is the only one that you can uh, take all of this into consideration. So let's see a uh, uh, example here, a motion control example. This is uh, uh, what we uh, use uh, in uh, undergrad control class as uh, a um, design, uh, <coughs> uh, design problem. Uh, it's given in real terms. It's actually from uh, a actual engineering system. And you want to, uh, um, to uh, push a 235 pound load uh, by 12 inches in uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 seconds with accuracy, with accuracy of 1%. And you're using a motor, uh, a pulley to drive the load. And this was actually a, a, a manufacturing machine um, uh, for, uh, to make the uh, a piston for a motorcycle from uh, like 20, 30 years ago. Right. So these are the, uh, the design, uh, um, uh, the mechanical design and its parameters. And this is the, um, the diagram of the system, including the, uh, the power, power side, power supply, the, uh, uh, the motor, the motor dynamics, the load, <clears throat> uh, the torque disturbance, the measurement of the position, 
the voltage that the, the control as a control signal that the uh, fed into the um, amplifier. So this is the plant. And if you uh, go through the uh, uh, block diagram, block uh, reduction, you see the kind of function is roughly 206 divided by um, s times s plus three. So this is the, uh, the simplified kind of function of the, uh, of the plant. But remember, you have to operate this in a linear region. Otherwise, this could get uh, ugly real fast. Okay. So in this case, let's, do, uh, let's see how, how the uh, roof shaping uh, works. Okay. You have uh, a, uh, uh, first of all, let's see uh, <clears throat> uh, what's the omega C should be. Right? Uh, what's your targeted uh, crossover frequency, uh, roughly the bandwidth of your closed control system. Uh, T settling is 0.4 second. And uh, this give you a, a 0.1 second uh, a time constant, uh, which uh, for first order system is about the, it's a, 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 a 10 reading per second bandwidth. Okay? And uh, because this is a, a, a not first order system, this is altogether, it's more like um, a, a fourth order system uh, when, when we're all done. So we uh, give it some room, so we make uh, targeted uh, crossover frequency 20 reading per second. Okay? <clears throat> So uh, the plant, the plant uh, is this, and we put it in a standard form. We take the constant out, and this is one over s, uh, parenthesis s uh, one plus s over three. Okay, this is a constant we can cancel using the, again in the in the uh, controller. So don't worry about that. Just look at this. Let's start with this. This is the plant uh, trend function, and if you sketch the body plot, the magnitude plot, it looks like this. Okay. <clears throat> and this corner frequency is three. Uh, 20 dB per second, uh, 20 dB per decade, and then 40 dB per decade. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, this is about one reading per second. And this is, uh, you want it to be 40, right? Uh, uh, 20, omega C equals 20, right? So, so, so you need to uh, find a controller so that uh, uh, this will be changed to that. Okay? Uh, 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 where do we start? Well, we start from low frequency. This is minus 20 dB uh, per decade, you need minus 40 dB. <clears throat> Minus 40 dB, you can derive it from your uh, data constraints. <clears throat> I will not go into the, de uh, the details, but this is roughly what they look like in all uh, 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 in uh, most uh, uh, motion motion control design scenarios. Uh, you want a high gain, a good uh, tracking, good disturbance rejection at low, at low frequency. Uh, so to, to uh, change the slope, you need an integrator in, in the denominator, uh, and at this elbow, the elbow, this is a 20, and this is omega c over k. It's a k omega c, roughly symmetric. Right? So to be uh, to be uh, to make it easy, make k equals 10. So this is like a two. <clears throat> right? So so you want to change the slope from uh, minus 40 to to uh, to 20, right? And uh, the plan actually around this area uh, the, around this point uh, changes from uh, minus uh, 20 to, uh, to, uh, uh, to minus 40. So you need to offset this with a, with a zero. And also you, you, you need additional zero to make it uh, minus four, uh, 20 dB per decade. So that's, the, that's where this uh, term, numerator term come from. One plus that's over three square. You need two of them to make it flat, minus 20 dB per decade. And at the uh, omega C equals uh, uh, 200, you need to drop it uh, down to to uh, to uh, uh, minus 40 dB per decade. So that's where this term comes from. Okay. And this K is a, a K that you uh, offset the uh, uh, plan gain. And in my lab design, just uh, uh, carefully choose this so that uh, this is exactly uh, 20 uh, reading per, per second as you did on. Okay. Uh, this is uh, just rough uh, hand calculation, hand uh, illustration. Um, but if you do this in my lab, you can be uh, much more precise than this. So again, um, that's uh, a, a rough uh, introduction, a quick, quick introduction with the example to loop shaping design. Okay. Thank you for your attention. I hope this helps.